Here are some cooking shortcuts that a lot of chefs use to maintain sanity in the kitchen. You don't need to be a professional to take advantage of these techniques. If you aren't already using them, you might just want to try them out. When you think about chefs throwing down in the kitchen, you probably imagine a fridge stocked with fresh fruits and veggies just ready to be sliced and diced into the dish of the day. And that is indeed true for a lot of things. A salad needs to be made with fresh lettuce and produce, and pretty garnish on a pastry requires fresh fruit. But what about the dishes that have to be cooked? There's a lot to be said for the beauty of frozen produce, which can last an extraordinarily long time and is often just as nutritious as fresh produce. Professional chefs who chimed in for a 2021 article on Sheer Lux weren't shy about sharing their favorite frozen produce items. Frozen peas topped the list for several of them, while sweet corn, frozen fruits, and pearl onions also earned mentions. Possibly the most interesting frozen veggie suggested was Edson Diaz Fuentes' choice of ripe avocados. This is genius when you always happen to miss the window for using an avocado at its prime. As Diaz Fuentes explained, I never use them for guacamole, but the creaminess is great for shakes. I add the frozen avocado to carrot, celery, orange juice, and a pinch of spirulina for a great veggie shake. If you want to try your hand at making homemade pizza dough, you can certainly do so. But when it's pizza night at home, you often want the luxury of simply throwing toppings on pre-made dough and cooking that bad boy up in no time. Having pizza dough already on hand certainly speeds up the process. But just grabbing from a cold case at the grocery store isn't the best possible option. As chef Donatella Arpea told Long Island Weekly in 2020, you should skip the pre-made dough from the store, as truly good dough is indeed the foundation on which to build a good home pizza. As she put it, when you have a beautiful dough, you have a great pizza. So where can you actually get the good stuff? If you have a favorite local pizza joint, call them up and ask if they're willing to sell you some raw dough. This might not fly at chain restaurants, but local pizzerias are more likely to be willing to part ways with some of their dough. Once you've procured it, just store it in the freezer or the fridge if you're going to make the pizza the same day and pull it out when it's time to start cooking. Let's do this thing! You know how artisan pizzas from the best pizzerias often have a slightly rough texture on the bottom? Chances are, what you're feeling is cornmeal. As Donatella Arpea told Long Island Weekly, a big part of a delicious homemade pizza is how the crust is baked. In addition to par baking, in which you pre-cook the crust without its toppings for a few minutes before adding the rest of the ingredients, you should use an extra hot oven, a pizza stone if you have one, and cornmeal flour. To pull off this trick, simply put the cornmeal flour on your pizza stone or your preheated pan before you place the dough for the crust on top. This step might sound pretty easy, but it adds some serious additional flavor. As our payer explained, the cornmeal flour underneath provides a nutty, crispy flavor. Not to mention it also creates that professional taste and feel typical of a pizzeria that can be hard to emulate when cooking at home. You can buy a box of breadcrumbs at the grocery store and easily use them for all your breading needs, unless of course you have celiac disease or a gluten allergy or intolerance. In that case, basic breadcrumbs are a recipe for a gastrointestinal disaster. But if you can't fathom ditching your favorite recipes that usually include breadcrumbs, you don't have to. According to Andrea Sprague, a writer for The Holistic Chef, potato flakes can sub in and do the trick as a gluten-free alternative to breadcrumbs. The first trick is making sure that you're buying potato flakes without gluten cross-contamination. Sprague recommends the Bob's Red Mill brand. Then you simply use them as you would breadcrumbs to help create the right texture, moisture level, and flavor in recipes for dishes like meatballs and meatloaf. If you want to use potato flakes to crisp up the outside of your chicken or fish, Sprague points to Food & Wine magazine to provide guidance on getting the gluten-free breading right. For example, they have a recipe for crusted cod that combines potato flakes with rice flour. If you don't have any problem with gluten, then you can look to the ways that chefs know how to put breadcrumbs to use in ways that the everyday home cook might not think of. For instance, as revealed in a thread for professional chefs on cheftalk.com, pro cooks suggest using leftover or dried out bread as an easy way to thicken sauces and soups. The key to this method is not to use fresh bread. Rather, you need to use older bread to get the right sort of texture in the final product. To pull off this trick, you can go nuts and try different types, including French, Italian, sourdough, or even basic sandwich bread. I love bread.
It's important that the bread that you use is dried out so that the breadcrumbs will actually soak up the other wet ingredients in the soup or sauce to help thicken it up. While you can throw chunks of dried bread into a sauce as it's cooking, your best bet is to run the dried bread through a food processor first so that it's broken down into crumbs. Then simply stir the crumbs into your soup or sauce so that they're well distributed. Now you're ready to cook away, as the crumbs will soak up the sauce or soup and make it that much thicker and heartier. If you've ever wondered how chefs make some of their incredibly flaky and flavorful pastries and dishes, the answer just might lie in phyllo dough. You can buy this dough pre-made at most grocery stores. And with a little practice, you can soon make wontons and other flaky pastries like a pro. Playing with this paper-thin and easily torn pastry dough can feel intimidating, but as chef Marty Susanis told The Washington Post in 1989, the dough isn't nearly as challenging as some chefs would have you believe. As he explained, it's just like playing with clay. You can make of it what you will. Once you start playing with it, you will see how easy it is to work with and you'll create your own fancy shapes. If you've already mastered using pie crusts or other pastry dough for a few recipes, you can start your experiments without too much fuss by subbing in phyllo to get a flaky taste and texture. You may think of foil packets as a cooking method reserved for campfire cookouts or college kids without proper pots and pans, but real chefs know that foil packets are also in fact an excellent way to lock in flavor. As test kitchen chef Melissa Gammon revealed on Food Network's website, she turns to foil packets whenever grilling up shrimp scampi. Grilling shrimp is definitely a delicious way to go, but you risk having the shrimp fall through the grates of the grill. And if you're not paying attention, you can overcook it and then have to deal with rubbery shrimp. And surely we can all agree that tough, dry shrimp doesn't make for the best dinner. By grilling the shrimp and all the other ingredients while you're at it inside a packet of foil, you lock in the flavor and moisture while retaining all the juices. You also don't have to worry about all the tasty stuff falling through the grate. The result is shrimp and sauce that's even better than the original scampi, perfect for topping the likes of salad or pasta. Unless you're making a fish sandwich, you probably don't incorporate mayonnaise when you're prepping a fish dinner. But according to Melissa Gammon, mayonnaise is quite simply one of the best hacks around for preventing your fish from ending up dry. Mayonnaise working on fish is similar to the way that cocoa butter works for your skin. It essentially offers a layer of fat that will help to keep the fish from drying out while cooking. I got too much cocoa butter lotion on my hand. If you happen to be grilling your fish, the mayonnaise can also add an important function to the whole process by preventing the fish from sticking to your grill. Of course, like other fats such as butter and oils that you add to your fish, mayonnaise will impart a flavor as well. It may not taste exactly what you're used to with fish dishes, but Gammon insists the result is subtle and rich, so it's definitely worth giving it a try. In a 2021 Reddit thread asking chefs for their favorite ingredient, one commenter pointed directly to vinegar, stating that it's a great option to try instead when you think a meal needs more salt. As that commenter put it, it is often the thing that is missing when people go for more salt and spices in their cooking, wondering why it doesn't taste quite as good as in a restaurant. Of course, some people's palates can't quite handle vinegar, but the reasoning among its proponents comes down to the acidic nature. As another Redditor emphasized, the addition of acid to a dish is game-changing. The way salt and acid work together in cooking is ridiculous. One more commenter took the explanation a little further by suggesting, if your food is bland and you can't seem to add enough salt, add a little bit of acid. Vinegar, lime juice, lemon juice, in small enough quantities, they're nearly interchangeable. In other words, if your food is bland and you like vinegar, then add a little vinegar. If your food is still annoyingly bland but you don't like vinegar, then try adding lemon or lime juice before you reach for the salt. And remember to keep the serving small. Use just a splash at a time and see how the flavor affects your food. You could very well be pleasantly surprised. If you love garlic, then you probably really love it. And if you don't, you probably hate it. Garlic don't work, boys! Either way, there's more to adding these small and highly aromatic white cloves to your food than simply deciding how to cut it and how much to add to a dish. In a Reddit thread with chefs sharing cooking tips, one commenter suggested, the amount of garlic flavor is dependent on when you add the garlic. Add it early for light flavor, add it late for bold flavor. This simple suggestion garnered more than 30,000 upvotes and a slew of responses that amplify how important this little tidbit of information really is. If you've ever bitten into a raw garlic clove, then you already know that the flavor is strong to the point of being overwhelming. But when garlic has been cooking for a while, the flavor mellows considerably. By adding garlic late in the game, 
you'll end up with a version that has more of a bite. Another tip on garlic intensity was added to the thread by a commenter who stated, It also depends heavily on how you treat the garlic pre-adding it. The more processed the garlic, the more garlicky the flavor. Whole cloves or very roughly chopped ones give you a milder flavor and will last longer in the heat. Finely minced or better yet, grated garlic will give you a sharper, spicier flavor. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more mashed videos about your favorite foods are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.